If you're a fan of Pontiac, then you know that Pontiac produced some great V8 engines throughout its lifetime. And those Pontiac V8s ranged in size from a paltry 265 cubic inches in the early 1980s. Let's not discuss that engine too much. All the way up to a 455 cubic inch that started life in 1970 and then was sunset in 1976. But some of the more famous Pontiac V8s were produced in the mid-1960s, and those had 389 cubic inch as well as 421 cubic inch displacements. The Pontiac 389 was a mainstay of Pontiacs for many years and was just an excellent, reliable engine that could be outfitted with, well, some hot stuff, including in the GTOs where they were outfitted sometimes with three two-barrel carburetors. The 421 was an even hotter mill in some cases and was introduced in 1961 in some Super Duty Pontiacs topped by two four-barrel carburetors. The 421 continued life all the way through the 1966 model year, and then in 1967, it was sunset in favor of an enlarged 428 cubic inch engine. Now, as I mentioned, many Pontiacs were outfitted with 389 V8s under hood. Here's one in a 1966 Catalina. This is just the rather tame 389 cubic inch two-barrel V8, but it still was a great runner. And you had 421s as an example that came under hood standard in two plus twos like this that had the open breathing air cleaner that were, again, great factory engines. Now, aside from the somewhat conventional V8s, Pontiac produced a number of strange engines, including in 1961, introducing this so-called half a V8 into the small Tempest. This literally was half of a 389 cubic inch V8. You can see that there's only a cylinder bank on the passenger side of this Tempest. And so as a result, this was a 195 cubic inch engine. And it was, well, interesting and different, and it worked. It was reliable in general. The only thing is with a four-cylinder engine this big with no balance shaft, it did have some, well, shakes and shivers associated with it, some of which were quelled by the Tempest rope drive shaft. Another interesting and innovative engine that Pontiac came out with in the 60s was the overhead cam six-cylinder that was produced from 1966 through 1969. Here you see it's topped by a four-barrel carburetor. This was a rather hot variant of that Pontiac overhead cam six-cylinder. And this six-cylinder had some interesting technologies associated with it, including belt drive for the overhead cams. You can see the cover there on the front end of the engine. I also like the valve cover, the stylized valve cover that says overhead cam and PMD on it. So Pontiac just wasn't your average run-of-the-mill division when it came to producing engines. It was trying to do things that were innovative, like this six-cylinder. And apparently when Chevrolet got some press in Hot Rod magazine in the mid-1960s talking about some of their hot V8s, Pontiac got a little jealous and wanted to describe an engine program that had been going on for some time that, well, we're going to discuss here today. And that is the overhead cam V8 engine program that Pontiac was developing in the 1960s. The first thing to discuss are its origins. And those really came from Pontiac's chief engineer, Malcolm McKellar, that you see pictured here on the cover of the March 1968 Hot Rod magazine, along with some of his creations, including one that he's standing next to, that's actually a double overhead cam Pontiac V8 with tuned intake runners. And in the foreground, you'll see a Pontiac V8 with three two-barrel carburetors and a valve cover that reads overhead cam. That's the one that we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about. But the key thing to note here is that McKellar was really an innovative engineer and is or was the driving force behind Pontiac's overhead cam six-cylinder that I previously mentioned, as well as the half of V8 Tempest four-cylinder. McKellar also developed Super Duty 389 and 421 cubic inch V8s that really were successful on the NASCAR circuit, so much so that they often beat Ford and Chevrolet at Daytona. And along the way, McKellar developed a number of novel items for Pontiac V8s, including factory racing camshafts that were named after him. There was the McKellar number no. 7, number no. 10, and so on. But perhaps the coolest item that McKellar put together, his team put together, were the series of overhead cam V8s that I mentioned before. Let's first talk about the one that you saw on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine that McKellar was standing next to. That's a double overhead cam V8, actually a 389 cubic inch, uh, 
and it was four valves, four cams, and was completed in early 1963. This was back when Pontiac was just starting to experiment with overhead cam V8s, and this particular V8 not only had double overhead cams and four valves per cylinder, but that cross-ram tuned intake runner setup that was outfitted with fuel injection. So talk about a pretty radical setup, especially for 1963. Clearly, McKellar's team was well ahead of its time. Now, unfortunately, not many details of this particular fuel injection system were revealed to Hot Rod in their 1968 article. And for whatever reason, Pontiac wanted to keep it under wraps. All they said was that it was a speed density type uh, fuel injection system. One can imagine it was a mechanical setup, obviously not electronically controlled. But I wonder what was really the difference there between that and some of the fuel injection setups that were employed by Chevrolet on various vehicles. And I believe that double overhead cam V8 also had a timing belt that drove the overhead cams. That was something that was, again, very innovative and only used with niche automakers. Now, interestingly, along the way, McKellar's team tried a number of different setups, at least not just for the camshafts, but also for the number of valves per cylinder. There were a number of arrangements, some with two, three, and four valves per cylinder. And on the three valves per cylinder experiments, interestingly, the team not only tried two intake and one exhaust valve, which would be typical by today's standards, but the inverse, one intake and two exhaust valves, although the intake was significantly larger, about two and a quarter inches versus the exhaust valves. Now, what ended up happening is over time, the Pontiac engineering team tried to come up with something that could actually have been production ready. And so they went from the four valve per cylinder, double overhead cam, belt driven engine that you saw McKellar standing next to, to something slightly more conventional, but still unconventional for the time, which was the single overhead cam V8 that we initially started discussing. Now that single overhead cam V8 had two valves per cylinder, so Pontiac had gone away from the radical valve setup. And in part, that's why you can see that the valve cover isn't all that large. There's just an overhead cam that's driving the two valves per cylinder. But still, despite the fact that it was more conventional in the valve train, the engine did have a belt drive overhead cam, which would eventually make it into the Pontiac overhead cam six-cylinder engine that was produced from 1966 to 1969. And you can kind of see that in just the overall design of the valve covers. It's basically a similar looking theme. The Pontiac designers apparently just lifted that valve cover theme and put it on the overhead cam six cylinder, although they did add PMD to the valve cover. I guess they had a little extra space with two extra cylinders on the bank, and so they thought that they would just put that there. Now, as I said, this single overhead cam engine, which I believe was 421 cubic inches at this point, was basically, according to McKellar, a bolt-on package. The cylinder head bolt arrangement remained the same as the conventional engine, and it was relatively easy to upfit a Pontiac V8 into this configuration. Now, along the way, there were some modifications to this V8, but there also were some that were placed in vehicles. Notice, here's one in a vehicle. Apparently, this was one of Malcolm McKellar's personal cars that Pontiac actually gifted him upon retirement. So this car, I don't know where it is today, but it has to be worth a fair amount of coin. And there's a special kind of, I would say... I don't know what you'd call it, something to contain the three two-barrel carburetors atop the intake manifold. Uh, so this was a highly unconventional design. Now, eventually, Pontiac would shift the overhead cam drive from the front to the rear because, as you can see in the front, there's really no place to put an air conditioning compressor or some other accessories. And they would solve that by, again, putting the overhead cam drive at the rear. Now, I don't know what that meant for serviceability, but that was their decision and the way that they thought that they could make it more readily packaged into a typical vehicle. And indeed, while the overhead cam V8 didn't make it through to production, that overhead cam six cylinder did employ some of the technologies that were developed as a result of this overhead cam V8 being tested. And there were some other technologies that made it into Pontiac engines as well. For instance, according to that Hot Rod article from March of 1968, all assembly line power plants featured chrome valve stems, both on the intake and exhaust, hardened valve spring cups and hardened valve spring cup retainers, and the undersides of all ram air engines, 
incorporated swirl polish. So that was something that they learned from the engine program that you saw here. Now take a look at this photo. This is one again from that Hot Rod Magazine article, March of 1968. And you can see the overhead cams that are being driven by the belt. I can't quite tell what's going on here in this photo, if that's a single belt or if that is multiple belts. I think it's just a single belt and then there's a tensioner that's keeping the tension on the belt. So <laughs> overall, just an interesting setup. In any case, while the overhead cam six did make it through to production, none of these Pontiac overhead cam V8s, whether it's the 389 double overhead cam, the 421 single overhead cam, Pontiac even had a 428 single overhead cam, I believe. None of them made it through to production. And I think part of the reason here was they felt that their engines could make enough power without the added cost of the overhead cams. And I think a, another reason was just that, well, this was kind of the end of the performance era. And that was known that engines were going to have to become more efficient and emissions compliant. And well, that just meant that there was less room for performance. Now, McKellar would take a more conventional approach to increase power by developing the Super Duty V8 that was introduced in the 1970s. That was still a pretty hot engine, made over 300 net horsepower at a time when 300 net horsepower was something that almost any engine did not make unless it was a racing engine. So not all of the lessons were necessarily lost although that Super Duty engine was very different from these overhead cam designs. Thanks again for watching. What do you think about the Pontiac overhead cam V8s? Do you wish that those were put in Pontiacs? Put a comment in the comment section. Until next time, take care.